like what the fuck is going on in my life moments like i am in fucking soul look at this sick view yeah <laughs> what's life i did something stupid let's see yeah we have a bit of a problem namely there is a typhoon incoming in Taipei. But me and my privileged ass, I have a problem. Um, and that is that I'm supposed to fly to Seoul tomorrow. But <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> so I'm very much doubting whether I should rebook my flight to tonight. Okay, I think I'm gonna do it because I really feel like if I don't do it now, I'm gonna regret it if my flight gets canceled tomorrow. And what if the flight gets canceled today? Will I be okay with that? Oh, I hate making these spontaneous anxiety filled decisions, but honestly, the weather's gonna be amazing in Seoul. And you know, I'd rather skip a typhoon here, uh, but I also rather not lose all of my money for this trip. Okay, I rebooked my flight to tonight, which means I have to be at the airport at like five and it's 11 right now. So I have to pack my bags. I don't have any currency like with me. I don't think you can tell, but I'm like shaking. I'm feeling super stressed, which also means I have to skip classes today. But if everything goes according to plan, I'll be in Seoul in a little over 12 hours. So I went to a cafe. I booked my hostel for tonight, which is gonna be the tiniest room I've ever seen in my entire life probably, but I don't really care. I just need to sleep there. And then tomorrow I'm just gonna sit in a cafe before I move to my other hostel. I also got an eSIM, so hopefully that'll be okay. And I'm almost done packing my bags and then I'm going to the airport and I'm flying to Seoul. Like because of all the stress, it hasn't dawned in on me that I'll be in a different country in six hours. Now the fucking nerves are kicking in because I'm I'm actually going now to the fucking airport. Um, and this is this is what I'm taking with me on a six day trip to Seoul. What is my life? What is my fucking life? We have passed through the check, so now I'm on to gate A1. I'm flying to the Seoul airport. I am so so happy that eventually the end. <laughs> It looks like it's all going okay. Yay. Do you want to be in the video? For oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yay, we arrived. We arrived in Incheon. See you, here we come. We're gonna make it. Good morning, guys. First little view of Seoul. It's fucking sunny. And it's cold. I'm on the lookout for breakfast. And I have the place in mind that I want to go to. It's here. It's egg drop. Let's get an egg drop. Avocado. Mm. I dropped salsa everywhere. Het weer helpt ook echt heel erg mee. Het is echt fantastisch. Kijk dan. What the fuck. Jet lag, and that's because I went out last night. 
for multiple reasons, I slept like two hours <laughs> and then I went back to my hostel and I did a little nap. I'm feeling very tired. <laughs> I've had two iced coffees and I had some street food here for the first time. So I had some tteokbokki and like an egg bread. I don't want to waste more time. So let's do a big hike to Namsam Tower. I don't think I want to take like a gondola because let's challenge myself, you know? My hungover ass. <laughs> My hungover face. But I climbed the mountain to Namsam. Do you call this a mountain? I don't know. It did feel like one because holy shit, I'm, <laughs> I'm dying. I'm sweating. I'm having the cold sweats. But hey, it's fucking worth it. And the views here are so stunning. It's absolutely insane. Wait, let me turn the camera around. Little dessert. Mm. Very hot. Oh my god. Mm. 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 Good. Really good. Yep. Oh wow. Okay. It's hard, yeah? Oh. <laughs> it's like thick, thick sugar coating. Very thick sugar coating. Scale of 1 to 10. I mean, it's good. It's like super sweet. So, like, yeah. six? Yeah, okay, six. all right, solid six. Welcome to another beautifully sunny day in Seoul. I just had my morning coffee, but I still haven't had breakfast. Yesterday, I went to Myeongdong Night Market and for lunch and for dinner, but I tried so many good things like uh, chicken skewers, beef skewers, and so many nice desserts. And I met up with some guys who I met on the first night for Korean barbecues. So that was very fun. Now I'm gonna go to the palace. Which is behind me, but you can't really see it. I mean, it's like not an ugly view, is it? Oh, and the sun! Oh my gosh, it's so good. But apparently this like palace was built originally in like 1395. It got destroyed somewhere in the 1500s and they rebuilt it end of the 1800s. So it's been here again for a little while, but like also not that long, the restoration bit though. Now where I've been. Oh, and I'm glad to say that I feel so... Dankbaar dat ik hier mag zijn, dat is... Oh ja, dat is de plate. Traditional Korean plate. <laughs> Where are we going? We are going to visit National Museum of Korea. Yeah. Sorry, I don't <laughs> have to do a little bag checking intermission. <laughs> okay, hello everybody. Please look at this view. We are now in uh, Seoul, South Korea. No way! Are we? <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> and this is. The sunset? sunset with a lot of high buildings. High, high buildings. Hello everyone. Okay, it is day three or four of Seoul. I'm so confused. <laughs> And I don't know if you can tell, but like, I feel really tired and I feel like I look tired. I am a little bit sick-ish. I think it's because, first of all, very little sleep over the past four to five days. <laughs> so many new things to explore again, whole new different city. And the climate, especially in Seoul, is very different from the climate in Taipei. Like in Taipei, it's 33 Celsius and super humid. And I didn't really have the right clothes when I came here in South Korea and Seoul because here it's around 20 degrees, 23. And today it is a little bit cloudy, but overall the skies have been blue and the sun has been shining a lot. I did buy a new jacket, so that's good. But I think the whole temperature change, little sleep is like hitting me hard and my throat is like hurting a lot. I slept in until like 12 today. It is 3.30 and I haven't really done anything. And this is like a moment in solo travel where I just feel a little disappointed by myself for taking things 
slowly, but it's it's fine to have those kinds of days and especially when you feel uh, like a little sick, I think it's just necessary to take rest, but like my <laughs> my mental health and like my brain are just being a little mean and telling me like you should be more active, like don't take a resting day, like keep on going, you know, like make the most of your days, but sometimes it's because of physical stuff or mental stuff that you can't really do that so all i've done today is like drink a coffee eat a cake have an onigiri do some laptop stuff which is also necessary i wanted to visit a lot of really cool bookstores today because it's a little gloomy but i haven't been able to find good ones yet and it's making me feel a little Ugh. but i'm trying to accept it and try to find at least like one bookstore here and then go to a temple this one but also i have so many other bookstores to explore and i don't want to immediately buy one at the first bookstore that i see but oh my gosh i've heard so many good things about intermezzo <sighs> i look so many good books here oh my god but i also want to find like korean fiction because i'm in korea you know like i can get sally rooney anytime anywhere but can i get korean fiction in korea anytime anywhere nope the things that I'm gonna get, but like... Okay, I hope, I hope that you're able to see me. Okay, I did something stupid. Let me see. I got another tattoo. I got this one for Seoul because this city has been treating me so incredibly well and i know you don't need a tattoo for that but i guess for me it's kind of like a hobby right now to collect little tattoos as as like memories to the countries that i've been to and i don't know just been very special the people that i've met here have been so nice and the fact that my ex-boyfriend was here two years ago and then now me being here feels kind of like a full circle moment like I feel really healed, I feel really happy with myself and what I'm doing and how much I'm pushing myself. I don't know, yeah, I'm just really thankful for all of that and now I'm gonna see if I can get some lunch around here somewhere and do some vintage shopping in Hong Bay. Yeah. Like you can hear music everywhere until so far first night. I would definitely prefer sleeping in my previous hostel, but it's fine. So now I'm gonna go to Plant Cafe, which is really really popular around here. Hopefully get a nice breakfast. I need to get some coffee or somewhere. <laughs> 
with these kinds of like historical places, I wish I could just like jump back into time and see how people actually like, lived in these palaces and what their daily lives looked like. It's so interesting to me. God, it's so fucking beautiful here. <laughs> oh, look where I am, it's crazy. You also have a fairy tale. Imagine this beautiful house. Sex to your Ghibli movie, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at that sun. That's sick. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sweating so much. Can't stop seeing it, but like how fucking beautiful is this view? And like, I don't know. Yeah, this is the state of me and my mental health no my mental health is doing pretty well <laughs> but it's just so pretty oh i think that's little tower actually where i'm gonna visit tomorrow little distraction are that I want to see and also the very famous I think it's called Starfield Library so I'm gonna have to travel 40 minutes for that like Seoul is fucking huge first I'm gonna explore a really cool looking bookshop here in Itaewon that's where I'm headed off to right now I need to make this green light Okay, I could not find the book park, whatever. And these are things that make me feel so frustrated. Like I could cry from frustration. Little exercise for me to not let that get to my day, but it's like really difficult for me when I am already having like a late day. I'm trying to breathe and like tell myself like it's fine. Like I have all the time in the world. I think I've made it to my first book. Also, it's like right across from Little Tower. Okay, not me being like, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, literally and figuratively, I mean, it looked not that great from the outside, but oh my god, the inside is so beautiful. And apparently, they also shot like a Korean drama here, so it's quite famous. And it was actually a used bookstore. I did find some English books, but none of them spoke to me. And I just have a couple of other bookstores still left to explore, so that's why I'm moving on and not really browsing. As you might be able to hear, I'm getting sick and I'm feeling super, super stuffed. So I'm really trying to sort of push through today and tomorrow and then this weekend I'll probably like crash in Taipei. This shit is fucking disorienting. Like how huge these buildings are hard. It's just messing with my perception. I made it to Little Mall. It's a tiny, you know? So let me find a map of this fucking mall because I want to see the bug store. Finally, I found it. It's also so fun to see some like translated work because Midnight Library. Such a good book. And I'm hoping to find some English ones here as well, and I don't know how successful I'll be with that. Okay, well that was very overstimulating. Unfortunately, very little English books. It was a beautiful store though. They had so much stationery, so I would highly recommend you to visit that store if you're looking for nice gifts for someone or I don't know it was just like a huge store I know it's a chain store so that's it definitely gave off those kinds of vibes and I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily but maybe not what I'm looking for right now but it's really hard to find the super cutesy like bookstores or at least around the area that I am at right now also look at this This looks fucking strange. I'm feeling worse and worse by the second, but I'm still gonna continue on. I'm gonna go to the Starfield Library. And I do need to buy one book, and I really want it to be a Korean one, obviously. Oh my god, 
have to see it. It's fucking sick. Taipei again, even though the temperatures here are so good. Like, I can walk around without sweating all the time. Mostly, I'm just gonna miss the city of Seoul. I have fallen in love with this city, and I totally get why people like it so much. So I'm gonna enjoy my last day. I go to the War Memorial. I'm actually gonna get a book today. Like, I need to get a book. So I'm going to the bookstore. I'm gonna visit one of the palaces still. And I think that's about it. I have to leave for the airport at nine in the evening because it takes about like one and a half hours to get there by metro my flight is at 12 30 at night so it's gonna be intense because i arrived in taipei local time 2 15 in the morning and either i have to wait for like three hours for the first metro to go back to the city or maybe i can find some people to share a cab with but first let's finish my last day in seoul finally get my book. It feels kind of symbolic to buy the book on the last day of my trip, so let's go. So I have a little humble stack that I can pick one from and I'm gonna read the chapters of each of them and then I'm gonna choose which one I'm taking home with me. So you should see. So having my last meal at Myeongdong street market i have all these like different kimbaps so with bulgogi with kimchi with tuna buy so cute buy dirty eat at home <laughs> buy so i'm so excited <laughs> I am back. Oh my gosh. I am smiling, but like on the inside, I'm actually, I don't know how I'm feeling about being back in Taipei right now. Like honestly, of course I love Taipei, but this solo trip has meant a lot to me. First, especially like 72 hours in Seoul were absolutely insane. And after that, some of the people that I initially met, they left Seoul and I was feeling kind of lost. I didn't really know like what I want to do and I wanted to be with people, but I also was like, ah, there was some some kind of barrier happening, like mental barrier with meeting new people for a little bit. But like the second half of my trip, I mostly spent alone and exploring Seoul by myself, which was nice because on the one hand, you can do everything that you want to do and like no one is holding you back. And in that sense, it's super nice because you don't have any other person to depend on. But being alone all the time also means that you don't get to share the experience. So especially on my last day, going to the War Memorial Museum, which was beautiful and I think is a must visit when you're in South Korea and Seoul. But because it's such a heavy subject, of course, um, and everything that's going on with Gaza and Israel, you start to think about that as well. And you start to think about the whole history with North and South Korea. And it's a heavy ambiance to be in. And if I would have had someone who was there with me at the time, I could just share and talk about it and it was beautiful but it definitely left like a heavy feeling in my heart but besides being able to share those kinds of moments with someone else just the wonderful experiences i do really feel so grateful and i do enjoy exploring things by myself but the last half of my trip i was i was missing having a little buddy with me and then having to like fly back to taipei and all of my friends here are gone they are on their little like weekend trips either to like hong kong or somewhere else in the country in taiwan i am feeling a little lost because now I'm just like here by myself and I am a little bit sick. So I'm trying to take it slow, but my brain is being so nice to me. 
mm. but it's fine. I actually do quite like taking it a little slow. I've been pretty active over the past 10 days, so I'm gonna go to a little cafe and edit this video, but I also really want to read the book that I bought in South Korea. But now I'm also kind of sad that I also didn't bring Intermezzo with me by Sally Rooney because I thought, you know, I'm way over the amount of kilograms that I can take with me on the flight. They probably won't check, so I could probably take the book with me, but like, ah, you know, just to be sure I can buy one book. This time I'm gonna stick to my one book rule. And it bit me in the ass because now here in Taipei, Intermezzo is nowhere to be seen. I cannot find it anywhere, or at least not in the big S light bookstores. And I want to read Intermezzo right now. Like I want to know the hype. And I have this beautiful floppy paperback copy in it. Ah. However, the book that I bought, I'm obsessed. I haven't started reading it yet. I mean, I read the first couple of pages and they really made me feel nice. Like I was very excited. Um, it is is the Delergut Dream Department Store by Mie Li. And look at this beautiful bookmark. This is a bookmark from Taiwan though, but it's a beautiful butterfly bookmark. It's so pretty. It is actually a really short book. I think it's like magical realism fantasy. In a mysterious town that lies hidden in our collective subconscious, there's a quaint little store where all kinds of dreams are sold. Day and night, visitors, both human and animal from all over the world, shuffle in sleepily in their pajamas, lining up to purchase the latest adventure. Each floor in the department store sells a special kind of dream catered to each client. Meet Penny, an enthusiastic new hire as she navigates the world within the famous Deller Gut Dream department store, along with the other salespeople led by the flamboyant owner, Deller Gut himself. Already so intriguing to me. There is never a dull moment thanks to the curious, funny, and strange clientele that regularly visit the store. Follow along with Penny as she uncovers the workings of this wonderful, whimsical world. So I guess it's a fantasy, but it just really intrigued me. Plus I have seen this book like pop by a couple times before. I mean, it looks like a fucking fever dream <laughs> and it fits the theme so well. And I love that the author, like in the prologue, she tells that she has become like so fascinated with dreams and dreams are such a fascinating thing to think about. Like what the fuck are they? So I could finish it this weekend with the emphasis on could because I, I probably won't. <laughs> yeah, let's go to a really nice coffee place here in Taipei. I have one place that I really, really love. It's called the Pika Pika Cafe. Absolutely adorable. So I can sit there, edit a bit of this video, read my little book and just kind of trying to let this whole solo trip I don't know, uh, trying to process it because it's been so good and I've been feeling so weird and uh, I don't know. I guess it's okay, but I hate not feeling at my best and yeah, but at least, at least I will always have soul with me. It's so fucking cool. <laughs>